fast. <laughs> I slowed it down. Oh, good. As you can see, we're Sam's <laughs> pianist, so uh, this is what we got. <laughs> if I don't turn that mic off, we're going to get feedback. So, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Whew. Big sigh of relief. We're actually starting worship today. It's been a, a bit of a hectic morning um, that we have. Uh, uh, our, our pianist is out today, so if you give him some, some of your prayers throughout the days and throughout the week, um, he's got a reported stomach bug of some sort, so we're not really sure what's going on there, but uh, a few prayers for him would be great. Um, the year, it, there, we are still collecting uh, food, food items for the food pantry. There's a sign out on the um, sign-in table, I guess we'll call it. Um, there's a, a list out on the sign-in table for any items that are, that are specifically needed. Um, but of course, any items that you have that you can give uh, are, are welcome and, and, and graciously accepted. Um, but those are the items that they're specifically looking for. Uh, there are no, I have no other further announcements. Does anybody else have an announcement? Uh, yeah, Gene. Yeah, so um, we are trying to get some outlets put in here to the TV and the uh, video camera uh, because this will be an ongoing thing for a while. So if you take the donation, uh, just please think about it. We, uh, we really could use some help with all of the repair work we have, especially in the world. Yeah, so I'll recap that so people can, who, who may not have heard you. Uh, so the trustees are actually starting to, to work, and we're starting to look around the sanctuary. We've been kind of not, the sanctuary, the building facilities, we've been kind of in on a hiatus as everybody has been during the pandemic, and now we're starting to look and, and see that, oh, where we have some serious things that need to be taken care of. Uh, if you noticed, if you came in this way today, and you noticed that the church has brand new glass, stained glass windows installed. Uh, no, we just took the plastic that was obfuscating them off, and now you can actually see the, uh, the windows. We are uh, in the process of you know, reglazing them and, and doing a little work to, to get them ready to have a new protective uh, uh, solid glass co uh, cover put on them um, so we can keep the... The, the, the community able to see them as well as us be able to see them. If you look at them, they're a little bit more detailed today because they don't have that, that, yellowed, gla that yellowed glass behind them, but uh, uh, we, the, the point really is to get the, uh, to make this church look welcoming and look, look more like we're open than, than we're, we are not. Um, so we've got that. We've got some ro roofing issues that we have to take care of. We've got the, the church sanctuary uh, and buildings do look like they need to have a, a, a power wash, and at the very least, a power wash and a paint job, perhaps. So we have all these things coming up that are happening. Um, and of course, you know, the, the, the money is not necessarily there. So we're doing, you know, sweat equity and we're doing our best that we can with, 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 you know, the volunteers. So if you can do something, great, let Gene know. If you can uh, uh, put a little uh, extra in the offertory and you can put the, on the memo, you can put um, uh, trustees or capital uh, improvements or anything like that. If you want to give online, there's an option in there as a separate, uh, a separate gift. You can put, you can pick a capital improvements on that as, as well as a... Uh, uh, category, I think it's called there. So keep that in mind as, as we're starting to, you know, really fill up the sanctuary again. We're starting to come back to church. We're starting to uh, uh, make, make worship here uh, powerful. And one way we have to, th one thing we have to do is maintain God's church. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, are there anything else? Is there anything else? Okay. Um, well, let's go to the call to worship. A love that never ceases. A hope that cannot be quenched. A 
These are the things that God, that are of God. Then let us worship God. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we, we come here before you today humbly, not just to worship, but to thank you for the gifts that you've given us, for the ability for us to give back to you. Lord Jesus, we are so sometimes rushed around in this world that we don't remember that we need to stop and see you in every little thing that we ever do see. We see you in a blade of grass or we could see you in the sky. Lord Jesus, sometimes we need to remember and remind ourselves that you created all of this, including us, and that we come here to worship you today, but also be reminded that you are forever in everything. We ask that you keep us focused on you this, to this day, this week, and that you bless us with your presence, your grace, and your mercy throughout this week, throughout our lives. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning, kids, everybody at home, everybody here. If you guys want to come up and have a seat right over there, then we can talk face to face. Come on, come on, come on, Brandon, come on. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on, Riley. Come on. Have a seat over here. It's a nice comfy seat. Okay, you can sit there, that's fine. Oh, thank you for sitting up here with me. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I wanna tell you guys something, and you probably already know this, your parents probably told you, but Pastor Mike and I are gonna be leaving soon. We're gonna be moving to a place called Hawaii. Do you guys know where that is? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a group of islands way out in the Pacific. Yeah, it's a really nice place. So we're gonna be leaving and uh, going there. And there's a lot, a lot of stuff we have to do to get ready to go. Um, all this stuff in our house we have to pack up or sell or give it away. <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff <clears throat> that we have to deal with. Um, and one of the things we've been waiting for is um, the person who's buying our house uh, needs to get a loan from the bank to buy the house. So that's what we're waiting to hear about that. Um, and uh, Pastor Mike is get, getting really antsy about that. He's just like, uh, uh, when's that closing date? When's that closing date? Why oh, don't these people call me? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all he wanted for his birthday was a closing date. <laughs> That's the date we sell the house, yeah. So, you know, I tell Pastor Mike, you gotta relax, you know. Just, there's nothing you can do about it. You need to give it to God, right? When there's nothing you can do about something, you need to give it to God. Because God, well, you know, God can do anything, right? So he can take care of it. So it made me think of a verse that uh, it's a really common verse. You may have seen it other places or heard it. It's uh, Psalm 46, verse 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. So what do you think that means? Are you supposed to just sit still and think about God? What do you think? Yes, no? I don't know. I don't think that's what it means. I think it means when you, when you be still, it means stop running around, stop worrying about things, stop trying to fix things you can't fix, and just know that God is there to take care of it, and that he will if you give it to him. So if you guys ever have a problem, maybe you're having trouble writing a, doing some homework, or maybe there's a a friend you're having trouble with, maybe you have a boo-boo or something, 
And oh, there's nothing you can do about it, right? You can put a Band-Aid on it, but that's not going to heal it. And you give it to God and you say, God, please heal my boo-boo. God, please help me do my homework. God, please help my friend. Maybe your friend has something going on. You could pray for your friends, right? So remember that, all right? When things are kind of crazy, when you're having trouble, just stop. Think, okay, God, you, you take this God and you take care of it because he will, because he can. He has the power, okay? So let's, let's, let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for being there for us and, and taking all our burdens and all our worries and all our cares, Lord. And, uh, and please help us to just send them up to you, cast them up to you, that you can take care of those. Uh, please bless us this day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I wanted to make a quick announcement. Next week, Sunday school starts. Yes, right? All right. So I hope to see you guys all again next week. We're going to have Sunday school. We're going to have lots of fun. We're going to have lots of learning. And it'll be great, OK? All right. All right. Thank you. I am all over the place today. It's just one of those mornings, you know. Uh, things got a little bit, a little bit crazy. So, uh, you know, I I need in in my own heart, I need a little bit of peace. It's a time to worship. So, with that, I I I, I give you the peace of the Lord. And so may the Lord may the the peace of the Lord be with you all. So let's share that peace with each other. Today's scripture is Psalm 62. 
Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from the lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are, put, are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If we weighed on balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. You reward everyone according to what they have done. This is the reading of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, no matter what we do, no matter where we are in our lives, we are on that tottering fence. We just sit here and wonder what is the next thing we need to do for you. Lord Jesus, we ask that you identify that through our slowing down and our focusing on you. Lord Jesus, I hide behind your cross in all that I do. In your precious name I pray. Amen. A few years ago, I was sitting around a table with a bunch of guys. We were just about to start our uh, Bible study at the time. It was a time of devotion, and I don't really recall all the conversations that were going on, and in no way was any, any conversations negative, but this one, uh, one of this men's wives was having some sort of issue, and, and it was not an issue with him, but um, we were all trying to kind of, he was trying to kind of figure out and help his wife solve this problem. So... I was not the one, of course, having the issue. It was not me. I wasn't asking for a friend, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I could surely relate to, to, to his situation. Um, you know, having, having a problem with somebody that you love and not being able to truly solve it. Has anybody else had that sort of situation in their lives? Yeah. It's not just me. Great. Awesome. But... I, I, I paused just briefly, and, I, and, and you know, he hadn't been married ter- ter- too long, and, and, and I gave him my two cents worth. Over the past 25 years of marriage, I personally have learned, and sometimes the hard way, that a great many of your spouse's problems can be solved with this instead of this. You see, we as men, we have a a drive to fix things, right? Uh, To solve those problems and be the hero. But sometimes the definition of a hero is just being a comforting face and a caring pair of eyes to look into as she silently solves her own problems. I often think of this as I have issues throughout my week and think about staring into the eyes of Jesus his comforting face as I rattle off my problems, and he just listens. Unlike listening to your spouse to solve their problems, with God, there sometimes comes a time when it's our turn to listen. When we pray, he listens, and then he puts things into action. He puts things into action according to his perfect plan. And that means it becomes our turn to listen for his instructions. But how can we hear them if we're still screaming about our, per, our, our current problems? 
we have to stop and listen. Psalm 62, 1 today says, My soul waits in silence for God only. From Him. It, hmm. A number of years ago, when I started my morning devotional ritual, which consists of some reading, prayer, albeit sometimes quickly, depending how late I wake up for work, I've discovered some miraculous facts about prayer and devoting time to God that I, I, I actually didn't expect to be the truth. I read a bit of the Bible, at least a chapter, sometimes two, though these days I'm um, into the Old Testament and, and numbers and it's kind of hard to get through those. So my mind is kind of spinning a bit by the time I get to the end of the chapter. Uh, and sometimes I can barely wait to start praying. So suffice to say, these days, it's been one chapter. This is my workday routine. On Saturdays, uh, Saturdays I like to take the family out for breakfast or, and sleep in a little bit and wake up kind of hangry, if you know what I mean. Uh, get everyone up and run out the door. It's all about me, you know, on Saturdays. No time for devotions on Saturdays. I just try to make up for that, to fill that gap in somewhere else in the day. Weekends are tough. I get it. A break from our normal routine. God gets it too. Remember, he rested on the sixth day or the seventh day. He worked on the sixth day, so don't forget to work Saturdays. <laughs> he prefer that you don't forget about him on, on those days off. No cold shoulders for the almighty creator, you know, that sort of thing. But he does get it. Now on a work day when I oversleep, I'm guilty, it happens. Uh, I wake up, I grab a coffee, something nutritionally void to eat for breakfast and race out the door, barely making it to work for the old 9 to 5 or 7.30 to 4 in my case. I have been known to skip my morning devotional for, uh, for time once in a while. And you know what happens on those days? Very often I find on those days, those are the days that I slip away. Those are the days that I make a mistake. I slip up a bit bigger than the days that I get my devotional in. Admittedly, even as a pastor, I sin every day. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody on this earth that doesn't. The bishop, the pope, we all sin on every, uh, every day of the week. But some days, I've been known to not listen to the good voice of reason in my head and do the wrong thing, even when I know what the right thing is. Maybe it's just my point of view. Maybe it's me looking back at the day and making a correlation when there's really no causality. Or perhaps, just perhaps, I didn't get my mind right with God in the morning. And that leaves a tiny flick to work his nasty, stinking, rotty, garbage logic into my brain. And the dumb hum human goes, yeah, that's a great idea. No, it's not. Okay, so here I am, morning devotionals, head down, praying, and still learning. Sometimes I find my mind wandering. And in years gone by, I used to think that when my mind wandered during my prayers, that was old Slick up to his old games again. And I started to try to, no, I needed to control the situation. I reined my prayers back in, and I just said, I reined my prayers back in. Think about that for a second. Because me, a simple human, has the power to focus prayer to God, to make this prayer what I think it needs to be, to control my time with God. I think that makes me a rather ignorant human, to be honest with you. So I would say, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, get, the, uh, uh, get out of my head. <laughs> and he would leave. Huh, how about that? I was able to focus that prayer on what was necessary for the day, what was necessary for me, or 
should I ask now that I think about this? Was it Satan that left that prayer? Was Satan even there in that prayer to begin with? Or did someone else leave the prayer because it was all about me? Did God step away from my prayer because I wasn't focusing on Him? In my own selfishness, alone with the Almighty complex, rather than alone with the Almighty. What really makes me think that I have all the answers? Hmm. I had my ritual. I had my, you know, my prayer attack plan, right? My list of things that I needed to pray for, the people that I needed to pray for, my 15-point presentation to the Almighty God. Surely he would be impressed with that, right? At some point, I think it was one of my devotional podcasts that my wife and I listened to, a seed got planted. Perhaps... Just perhaps, old Slick wasn't there causing my mind to wander. Though I'm sure old Slick was watching from the sidelines, and yes, that's a sports ball metaphor, and I realize that I don't really know much about sports ball, but, but he's watching from the sidelines, and he's laughing as I sit there flailing about trying to figure out how to control my own prayers. And I was thinking of him, and he wasn't even involved. Eventually, I found that I just needed to stop. I needed to stop in my life and listen. Listen to what God has in my mind for me, what he has in store for me, and what he wants me to pray about. Think about that for a second. What God wants me to pray about. That's a hard concept to get your mind around sometimes. But it's the truth. Sometimes that 15-point presentation, of course, is a good thing. And that's, that is indeed what he wants me to pray about. But sometimes structured prayer is it's not what your soul needs to get through the day. Sometimes something else is required, something of, a, of more of a two-way conversation with the Almighty. Let Him guide your prayer for that day. Let Him tell you what to pray. Let His glory flow into you and then flow out of you. It's kind of like cleaning a bottle, right? It'll never get completely clean just by shaking it and whacking it out at the bottom. There always has to be, there always will be something left over in the bottle, even if it's just a sticky residue, right? It'll never actually be clean. You have to rinse it. And in this case, rinse your soul with the water of life. Let Him flow through you, cleanse you, and start your day out right. And that begins, that begins with stopping. It begins with slowing down and taking time to recognize that God is everywhere and God is all around you. A few weeks ago, I was waiting in the car for my wife on Sunday morning. We were ready to head up to church. And the sun in the driveway, the sun's beaming down through the windshield. And of course, I was sitting in the car, in, in the car holding a hot cup of coffee because... I live on it. The angle of the sun was just right as the steam churned out of the mug. I was able to see, and it was the first time I've ever seen this, I was able to see every single droplet of steam as it rose out of the mug. Maybe the temperature of the steam was just right, that it, they were separated far enough, but I was able to actually see every droplet of steam. I always thought of steam as a single thing, not as individual droplets. But this day, I saw them as individuals, just like God sees us as individuals, and dancing around the currents of this world, but also as individuals that He loves dearly. I had, not, had I not stopped that morning to look and 
identify God in everything, even in a droplet of steam. I may never understood how God sees us as I do now. So this week we're looking at getting into more of stopping. The importance of stopping and just recognizing God, recognizing Him in everything. Stop. Don't rush around. Do just a little less rushing this week. You know the old saying, stop and smell the roses? Well, I'm going to offer you a saying, instead of stop and smell the roses, stop and find God. Stop and find God in everything that you see. Next week, we'll get a little bit more into the listening part. But for this week, go about your day, live as you do. Know that there are things that God wants you to do. And know that God wants you to stop for a moment. Slow down to witness God in your daily life. And then there's a chance, a really good chance, that you'll see just a bit more of Him every day than you did the day before. So slow down and stop this week. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we ask that you show yourself this week to us. Show that you are here and around us. Give us the ability, give us the chance to stop for a moment. To stop and see the steam rising from a mug of coffee and know that That's you, God, in that steam, that you created everything. Give us the chance, Lord Jesus, to identify you in a blade of grass and you in a bird in the sky. Lord Jesus, we ask that you give us everything that we need to see you in all that we do, in all that we see. In your precious name I pray, amen. So, this week is, uh, today is my birthday, it's John's birthday, so uh, give us both a, a, a happy birthday when you have a chance. Um, it's the first, it's... <laughs> Thank you. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> We're going to be here a while. <laughs> it's the first time I've actually had uh, some new somebody, actually knew somebody. I think there's a few celebrities that have our, our birthday, but it's the first time I've actually known somebody with, our, with, my, with the same birthday as me. Though, admittedly, John, I think, had it before I did. Um, <laughs> I love you, John. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those, you know, that's, that's my, my moment of grace today. That's my joy. It's, it's being able to share my, my birthday with, with a, a fellow Christian, but with all of you as well. Um, are there any other uh, moments of grace or joys that have happened this week that you'd like to uh, share with anybody, uh, share with the congregation, share with anybody else too? Kathy. Wow. Uh, one of the members is my uh, grandson's uh, music teacher. So uh, him and I got to sit on, a bl- uh, on our beach chairs and hear some wonderful band music. That's right. Music, uh, live music is coming back. So that's, that's a blessing. You know, there's more things opening up and people are starting to uh, break out. And on um, Wednesday, the magic date is Wednesday, I think it is. May 19th is the date that apparently masks can go away. Because Thursday, today is different than Thursday. It's something happens on Wednesday night. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> are there any other more? Any other joys? Any joys uh, online? Oh, Tisha, yeah.
This week I had just gotten on Route 8 and I happened to glance at my gas, gas gauge and it was down to that single line. Mm. I didn't know how long it had been there. I couldn't think of any gas stations except if I had to take it all the way to Winstead. And I said, well, I should pray and laugh. And when I said, I'm going to pray, I was struck by <laughs> panic and I sprayed it all over. And God got me to the gas station. God, God got you to the gas station when you, when you prayed for, for those fumes to last just a little bit longer, right? Yeah, that was actually work. I see another hand back. Yeah. My daughter Jenny graduated with a master's in nursing. Graduated with a master's in nursing. Well, congratulations to your daughter Jen. Absolutely. Wow, that's fantastic. I, yeah. So you're moving just like next door kind of thing? Right, so a little closer than where we're moving. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> So you had I had like a a a, a group of of the uh, of the old people. That's as you're using your words because I'm not allowed to use those words because I get stink eye from somebody. Uh, <laughs> um, a bunch of old people came out and helped you helped you move your, your from one place to the net to the next. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, Tom. That's just a joy to have my daughter stay at home for a little while. It is uh, yes, absolutely. Well, it's great that you get to you get some time to spend some get you get to spend some time with them. Yeah. It was a joy yesterday to uh, you know work out the windows. It worked very well, and that was fun. It was really. Yeah, I mean that was a joy too. Absolutely, they, coming out and just pulling the pulling that that glass or that plastic off, which by the way broke real easy. Uh, <laughs> um, pulling that plastic off and then taking a step back and looking at the church and see, don't go too far. Uh, and seeing that you know these these windows are so gorgeous, and they stand out now, and 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 you driving down the road, the church kind of glows a little bit more than it than than it did before, um, and it'll be even better when we get it done, and you know get all the glazing done and the painting and all that stuff. But um, that was a that was a joy. Are there any prayers that need to be lifted up, or do we have any? Yeah. Oh, Jean. Yeah. Yeah, having everybody in the sanctuary today is definitely a blessing. Absolutely. Are there uh, any, any... Yeah, there's a, there's a moment of grief. Um, this is from Holly in Pittsburgh. She's looking forward to the arrival of her grandson. Uh, so she, uh, and and prayers, prayers for Jared and Alexis. That's her son and daughter-in-law. Uh, to have a quick and safe delivery. Mm. Yeah, so looking forward to a grandson. Wow, that's fantastic. Amen to that. So on that note, as prayers for the quick and, and, and painless and easy delivery for the, grand, uh, for the, for the mom, uh, we can go move into some prayers. Do we have any prayers that people need to be lifted up? Yeah, Tom. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, prayers for Janet as she's really the one here who had to take care of her and was visiting her in the last few weeks. And um, she went on hospice and decided on hospice. So prayers for uh, uh, Joan Bouchard, who is uh, now in a happier place. Prayers for Joan Bouchard, but prayers more, more so prayers for the family and those that, that miss her too as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. We need to remember to pray for people uh, when they lose a, fan, uh, a, a, a loved one. Anybody else? Kathy. Uh, John's uncle, uh, his mom, Margaret's brother, has been diagnosed with uh, colon cancer. Mm. Okay, so John's uncle's mother? Uh, John's mother's, mother's brother. brother. John's, okay, John's mother's brother has now got colon cancer uh, diagnosed. We'll, we'll, we'll pray for a speedy uh, recovery. Easy, easy, easy surgery. However, whatever, whatever methods of. They haven't decided what they're 
Right. Whatever happens, we pray that God's going to take care of it and he'll be around for quite a long time after, after this. So, any other prayers that need to be lifted up? Uh, anything online? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Prayers for your sister Rosa, absolutely. No, don't need to know what the reasons are. Just God, God hears them and God can take care of it. Yeah, yeah, Tisha. Uh, prayers for my 95-year-old husband, uh, Muriel, who's in a convalescent home. We just heard that she tested positive for COVID. Mm. So your 95-year-old cousin in a convalescent home has just been diagnosed with COVID-19. Okay. She failed the test. Well, that's a good test to fail. I mean, if you're going to fail a test. Uh, we'll pray for her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a, it's a tough it's tough. We love it here. We really do. Yeah. But we're not gone yet. So <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 tough for us too. We do love it here. So, you know, we have a few more we have a little bit more time here, so let's let's make the best of it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we can all pray for everybody, right? right. For the church, for us moving, to, for the church uh, moving on and, and getting the, the perfect pastor for, for, for what needs to happen next. And I personally don't know what needs to happen next, but uh, God does, so we can always work with that, right? Yeah, yeah. Anything, anything online? Bonnie, her niece is just diagnosed with cancer. Your, her, Bonnie's niece is diagnosed with cancer, okay. I definitely add that to our prayers. Anything else we can need to lift up with the Lord? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we, we lift up these prayers to you. We lift up all of the prayers that have been spoken aloud. We thank you for those joys that we are here rejoicing about. We ask that you hear all of our prayers, whether it's a prayer that's been silently spoken on our heart, written down in a, in a notebook somewhere, written online, in our chat, or lifted up verbally here with everybody else. Lord Jesus, we ask that you hear our prayers and that you, you love us. Not just answer our prayers, but love us as we lift those prayers up to you. We ask that you hear our prayers and we lift them up to you using the prayer that you yourself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So our choir is going to give us a, a, our, the first offering song of the, of, of, in the last year and a half almost. So bear with us as we, we, we work our way through it. Show me the way. Oh. 
Our uh, offertory tray is actually on the way out, so if you are wondering how do we have an offering but didn't actually pass a tray around, it's on the sign-in table on the way out. So, Or, of course, you can always give online and, and do it uh, from the comfort of your own home or the comfort of your own phone or however you want to give to us today. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to us. Not just the gifts of money, not just the gifts that we are giving back to you today, but for all of the gifts, from the ability to sing to the ability to get up the 94-year-old lady who helps Pudge move across from one apartment to the other. That is a gift, and we thank you for that gift. Lord Jesus, we, we lift up these gifts that are being given today. We ask that you bless both the gift and the giver. And we ask that you keep us strong in our faith as we learn that the gifts are all from you. We ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. So we will have no, uh, unfortunately, no uh, walkout music or anything like that. So bear with us today. Uh, as you do, however, keep an eye on everything in, the li- in your life that you have, uh, that you experienced this week. Keep an eye on even the fact that we don't have any walkout music. But we do have a blessing of, of, of friends and family here in this church with us today. And that is a gift from God. That is of God. 
Uh, so this week as we go out, I challenge you to stop every so often, more often than you normally do. Just stop and look around. And if you can't find God in something that you're seeing when you stop, drop to your knees right there and pray. Because He is there. You're just not seeing Him. So, Lord Jesus, we ask that you give us the strength and the courage to drop to our knees in the middle of a parking lot if we have to because we can't find you. And we ask that you give us the strength and the wisdom to do and find you in everything that we do. In your precious and holy name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.